This is a sickening story that has gone viral. Chicago police arresting four teenagers for torturing a mentally disabled teenager. This attack was streamed live on Facebook. CNN's Ryan Young is live in Chicago with more. What have you learned, Ryan? Well, this is just a tough story to talk about. In fact, at one point, they stuck the young man's head in a toilet and made him drink the water. This video is very disturbing. And what you're going to see is something that police are still investigating. Look at tied up. This disturbing 30-minute video streamed live on Facebook shows a man tied up, his mouth covered, crouched in the corner of a room. It's sickening. It's sickening. You know, it makes you wonder what would make individuals treat somebody like that. Chicago police describing the victim as an 18-year-old white male with special needs. His attackers are seen laughing as they kick, punch, and cut his forehead with a knife. Donald Trump. Four people now in custody, all African Americans, two males and two females. Police say the victim was targeted because he has a mental health challenge, but they are investigating whether the attack was racially motivated. They're young adults and they make stupid decisions. That certainly will be part of whether or not a hate crime is, uh, if we seek a hate crime, um, to determine whether or not this is sincere or just stupid ranting and raving. Right, huh? At this point, the superintendent is rejecting any connection to President-elect Donald Trump, but the investigation is ongoing. Some of it is just stupidity. You know, people just ranting about something that they think might make a headline. I know that he has mentioned Chicago, uh, but I can't connect that with, with what these folks did. Police say the victim was taken from the suburbs and could have been missing from anywhere between 24 and 48 hours. Officers found the victim wandering the streets in crisis Tuesday afternoon and brought him to a hospital. He's traumatized by the incident. It took most of the night for him to calm down enough to be able to talk to us. Just horrible, but it must be discussed. Alt-right media are blaming this torture attack on Black Lives Matter. In fact, the hashtag BLM kidnapping is the top trending topic on Twitter right now. Let's discuss what this is about. We got former Chicago police officer, president and founder of Seven Star Consulting, Dimitri Roberts, and CNN law enforcement analyst and retired NYPD detective, Harry Houck. Everybody should agree on one thing, Harry. It's a crime, and these guys did the biggest favor they could to law enforcement by putting this live on Facebook. Why? Exactly. You know, I've had cases like this before where we dealt with people that are uh, mentally insufficient. The fact is that these cases are very hard to prosecute because, uh, you know, you have an incident here where the, even the Chicago police officers had stopped him. It took them several hours for him to calm him down to be able to get a statement out from him. All right. So the fact that we have video and we have somebody to go back on the video to find one of the perpetrators is tremendous in a case like this. You know, you'll see prosecutors, it'd be very hard to put a young man like this on the stand in a case like this because he can be easily manipulated by a defense attorney. So the fact that we have all this evidence uh, that we've tracked down, the location where it happened, the clothes the perpetrators were wearing, the clothes that he was wearing, we're going to link all this together in this one case. I don't even know how I feel about them blurring the faces. I know why they do that when minors are involved, but in right. this case, you'd think they'd want help catching them. Dimitri, how do you think that this crime should be seen by people who watch the video? I think it should be looked at by in the way that it is. This is hate. This has, and hate doesn't have a color. So for folks to talk about this is somehow connected to Black Lives Matter is absolutely the wrong way to look at this. Hate is hate. Hate doesn't have a color, and we cannot respond to hate with hate. It's just going to perpetuate the cycle. What I think we can do in this situation is say that these are individuals that acted alone. And if we look at it that way, now we can really focus on rectifying the problem. The problem is cultural ignorance. These folks are ignorant, and it was flat out stupid, just like the superintendent said. So let us not also be ignorant in our response to this. Let's say, what is the solution here? And I think the solution is one, understanding where this cultural divide is happening. Folks want to be Facebook stars, for lack of better terms, but that's not the right answer either. This doesn't have anything to do with Donald Trump. This just has to do with these young people thinking that this is the right way to get their message but, out. And as we know, Chris, this is not the right way to do anything. Well, there's no question about that. But you got black kids beating up a white kid, and they talk about Donald Trump, and next thing you know, Harry, you got 
Black Lives Matter, you know, in the trending Twitter topic because people start seeing it in that context. What's your take? Well, you know, I, I think Black Lives Matter does have something to do with uh, what's, what's going on in this country today. Um, uh, you know, it, it's a contributing factor. It's not the specific reason why this is going on. And I, and I agree with Dimitri. You know, uh, these kids just sit there and laugh over what they were doing here. Um, this definitely look. I, what I look at it right now is if, if we were, I don't think that this is a, uh, any way connected to Trump. All right? I think it's a biased crime. Uh, I think they committed this uh, uh, act against this young man because he was mentally insufficient and the fact that he was white. All right. But as far as, um, you know, what, what Dimitri said, you know, regarding, uh, um, you know, Black Lives Matter being part of this, uh, I, I, I think there's, there's definitely some indication, you know, with this narrative that's going on out there that might make uh, some black individuals attack whites. You know, and so not only that, but let me, let, me just, let me just say one more thing. Um, all right. The fact is that if we're looking at four white guys doing this to a black insufficient, uh, mentally insufficient young man, we'd be having riots on the street now. And Black Lives Matter would be taking advantage of that narrative. And so would other people who are actually part of that narrative. Dimitri. We, we have a real opportunity here. Let's not be further divided around these issues. This has nothing to do with a hashtag. Folks always feel like they need to be on one side of this issue or the other. Nobody, we don't even need to bring Black Lives Matter into this. This is a hate crime. Hate doesn't have a color and culture doesn't have a color. So really, let's address why this happened. This happened because there was some ignorance and there was some, there was some folks that want to sensationalize their message and become Facebook stars. All right. So let's not start promoting hashtags or be on one side of this issue where we have a real opportunity to unify behind this. Yep. And what I'll further say to the viewers is Let's not respond to hate with further hate. Let's not be divided. Let's respond to hate with peace. And that's how we can further address these issues, not just in Chicago, but nationally, Chris. Yeah, but Dimitri, don't you think at least part of that uh, Black Lives Matter narrative uh, could s somehow be part of what happened? I mean, we see it happening with police officers, uh, uh, white police officers being attacked. Uh, we're seeing it with uh, every time a police officer shoots an unarmed perpetrator. Uh, and it turns out that the officer was correct in actually uh, shooting a perpetrator. Uh, don't you think that that's, I, I'm not blaming Black Lives Matter for all the problems, but I think that they are partially connected to this in some way as a result of that narrative. But it, it's, it's up to us, Chris, to change that narrative. That's why we're here. We're sitting on the national spotlight right now talking about this issue, and it is up to us to change that narrative. So, yeah, it could be connected, but it doesn't have to be. And that's my message today. Let's not make this connected to something that it's not. These are young folks who committed an act of hate against another other individual regardless of their skin tone and regardless of who they are or what background they come from. Listen, I come from the same places that these folks come from, right? The southwest side of Chicago. This is not a reflection of what good African Americans, young African Americans are doing on the south and west side and what folks like Black Lives Matter or Blue Lives Matter are doing to bring peace. So let's talk in peaceful terms and let's resolve this in a way that we can really make not just the city of Chicago stronger, but the country stronger. Dimitri, Harry, one thing is for sure. When bad things happen, people use them uh, to politicize and to advance agendas. But I'll tell you, a great step of progress is the way you two gentlemen just discussed it right here on New Day. Thank you for your ideas and the way you expressed Thanks, it. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. There is a lot of news for you this morning. Let's get right to it.